Christine, good morning. We are so happy to be here in another amazing Tuesday talk. I'm Lori Beard with my co-host, amazing co-host, Tammy Crawford. How are you? You're too sweet, Lori. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. How are you doing? I'm doing great, especially, Tammy, when we've been planning amazing things for our people, our audience. We are so excited for all the projects we have going on publications coming up soon and just amazingness. So I just want to say hello and, and just mention some of those, especially our, uh, our retreat, our mastermind um, and one day retreat in Idaho. We've heard you guys, we've heard that you have complications, schedule conflicts, and some of you three days is, is hard. So we came up with uh, one day event in beautiful and North Idaho. Both of us, if you have not met us, um, you're going to see both of us in person. Hi. So it will be a fun event. Um, it includes meals, your snacks, drinks. It includes, so make sure you go on and purchase your ticket to be here. Um, it's a day to um, fellowship with everybody else that's like minded like you. Um, get your questions answered, anything that we can help you with, and we can encourage you and inspire you. So it's one of those encouraging days. We want you to come. And so when you leave, you feel transformed. You're going to discover, experience, and transform all in one day. Yeah. And and we, we want to say to you that this is an opportunity for you to network um, with like-minded mind, uh, like minded people and also test yourself. Uh, we do our self-reflections because we're going to give you with tools and empowerment so you can become the best version of yourself yes there's no guarantee but we that's our promise to you that what we're wanting to deliver so tammy who do we have today here as our guest so i am excited to welcome welcome leanne today here as Marie our webster guest. so welcome, leanne. hi hi i'm super excited to be here thank you <laughs> so and where are you coming from i'm in chicago illinois so um, and a little bit on the north end of the city, and I live a half half block from the lake, so I got lots of nature right near me. <laughs> oh, that's that's wonderful. Now, it, I heard it gets really cold in the winter there. It does. Um, it's it's not for the faint at heart. Um, which we, you know, us locals like to think it's probably good that we don't have better weather because if we had better weather, we would have way too many people. So this keeps the really sturdy ones here. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> I love that. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not that. I'm wimpy. I need warmth and heat and tropical. I, get it. I, get <laughs> it. I live in North Idaho, so I understand, but I don't believe we get as cold as you guys. So um because so, we still have the ferns and everything else that grows here. Oh, okay. Um, which is really nice. So it's not, but I've lived in areas that were like yours that were yeah. so cold. But yeah. I feel like you, we can always fly out to an island, go on a retreat or something else, right? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And, you know, and it's interesting because I lived in LA, I'm from Ohio originally. I lived in LA for 12 years, which of course has, you know, lovely weather and no snow and, and all of that. And I've been in Chicago for 17. And when I moved back into, you know, the Midwest with the, you know, very definitive four seasons, I realized how much I have missed it. And how much it, it got me closer to um to nature and to the the natural cycle of things, you know, because yes, it gets cold, but you know, winter is that time when you kind of go inward and you get reflective and you cook differently and you eat differently and you do different activities. And then in the spring, there's that like inner, you know, ooh, like things are popping up and they're fresh and they're new, and summer feels different and fall feels different. And I think as both in my personal life, but also in my business life, tuning into that cycle has actually been really good for me. Uh, yeah, I totally get what you're saying. Yes, I, I, I totally I, agree. That um, goes along with like the only constant in life is change, right? Yeah. <laughs> so once yeah. you're acclimated to one thing or one season, then the next one's co coming yeah, and you so have to yeah. adjust accordingly. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's like and I can already start seeing a few of the leaves, and especially the higher elevations. You can start seeing, and I'm like going, no, but no, like, it is August, but it's like, like you said, the seasons remind us that another season's coming, yeah. and it also makes us, I think, we really appreciate our summers, hundred percent, and falls. So we're yeah. like, okay, 
springtime that's our hiking time usually or in the falls you know but it has to usually be late spring for certain high lakes and summertime's your boating right so yeah. it's like you want to make sure you use every day yeah yeah I've been telling myself that a lot and practicing especially in the summer you know just taking a walk at the end of every day because I'm like you know, I can't, I'm, a, I'm an all weather, weather gal. So even in the winter, I will. And I will tell you when it feels like is, you know, below zero, I don't go for little strolls by the <laughs> lake in the afternoon. So I'm like, it's summer, like, let me go enjoy this and take it all in. <laughs> Which is your favorite season? I think fall is my yeah. favorite. Yeah. Um, and I love things about each one. But the thing about fall is, there gets to be that the colors of course get beautiful right they they change and so you get to see that um the you know the weather it's just like i don't need like a heavy coat but i can kind of throw my jean jacket on you know there's that that crispness in the air and um and there's i, I don't know i like chili and cornbread and football and you know all of those things and so yeah and plus i feel like fall has that energetic of a harvest so i feel like if you know, we're working, especially as a business owner, a lot of times we're planting so many seeds and we're doing so many things. And, and there's that kind of harvesty feeling in the fall where a lot of things feel like they come together. And I love that. <laughs> I love it. And I agree with you. You said fall. And I, the first word that came to my mind was crisp and, yeah. and, and the celebrations, I'm not a huge fan of Halloween, but it's always fun. And then Thanksgiving and all those things. Um, yeah. and harvest, like you say, yeah, the abundance, celebrating abundance and being grateful is just yeah. amazing. So yeah. Leanne, tell us more about yourself, your background in, in a nutshell, kind of like, um, how is it that you are where you're at now with the services you render, you offer, and also tell us stories about how you've enjoyed transformation in nature and the yeah. outdoors and art. Yeah. Well, my path here has been odd. <laughs> I mean, there, there is no, I'm a great um, example of, you don't need to have it figured out. You can be figuring it out, you know, as you go along. Um, professionally, I started as an attorney and then I moved into um Port reporting sales. Like I got into sales when I moved to California. I got into coaching in 1998, and but it wasn't something I kind of led with. It was something I, a skill that I kind of used in my different businesses. I've done marketing and business development for law firms. I created the largest speed dating company in Southern California. Um, you know, I, I was the first person to do speed dating outside the Jewish community in, but way back in 2001. Um, so, you know, it's been a, and now I'm a speaker and a, and a coach. And so it's been like a, you know, let me, let me pick this skill up and refine it and I'll do it over here. And then, okay, now that I know this, let me go over here and pick this little thing up. And I've kind of patchworked it together, but I can, I can make it all sing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's just amazing. How... Yeah, I totally, totally get it and understand. Cause I know I, when I would speak at youth groups or different places and they're like, how many things have you done? Are you, are you, how can you do all those things? But it's yeah. a little bit at a time, right? A little and bit then you time. have to be flexible. And sometimes you're doing three or four things at once. So, Well, that, and I think also not judge yourself. I mean, I started working, my coach that I started working with 10 years ago, one of the greatest lessons that I learned from her was um, not to judge myself, but to actually recognize that that creativity, that ability to, to be flexible, that um, desire to learn and to try different things and that sense of adventure, um, those are great skills and, and not everyone has them or they have them in different degrees. And so if I can lean into that and leverage it, then, um, then there's a million possibilities versus if I used to think, you know, my brother's an engineer and he's been an engineer his whole life. And so I used to be like, why can't I just pick a thing? And it's like, well, you know, cause that's, the way he is and that's different from how I am and that's okay you know and I I it's great to have those people that are set in what this their skill level is the service they want to provide and things like that we need those people in our lives 100%. we also need people like you like okay what's my next calling or what's my next thing that I can do to learn for to to get all these skills like you're saying and leverage them 
for the benefit yeah. of the community you are surrounded yeah. by and your own self because some people are engineers or whatever for a long time and they resent it they're not happy and they are scared of risking or taking risks or trying something new yeah. uh, we had our yeah. guest last week was amazing he was a banker and then a school principal and on and on and now he's founding all this uh Uh, schools as the model he he origin originally thought of and um, he's making a difference in yeah the education uh world here in yeah. our, our country yeah. so um it so where are you now and and what is it that all these things that you're using and your talents and gifts and graces like what is it that what is your focus now Well, right now, and, and, and I'll say too, that all these different experiences really help me right now because I work with, I help women leaders who want to quit putting off the big goals that really matter and want to focus in on what's really important to them. So I find that especially once we get to a certain age, the runway ahead is a little shorter than the runway behind. And then it's like, oh, snap, what a, is this the life I want to be living? Like, you know, what, and, and get really intentional around that. And so all my variety of experiences and, and helping people transform in different areas and in different ways helps me today to say, you know, it, is it a personal issue that we're talking about? Great. I can help you with that. Is it a business issue? I can help you with that. Is it a confidence thing? I can help you with that. So it lets me use all those different skills. Awesome. So I saw that you, um, how did like your running and Ironman, I mean, it's like, of course I have questions about you being a lawyer. I have so many questions for you. I know. But it's like, how did that Ironman run train you? I mean, that was spending time out in nature, I'm guessing for your training. That was, that was, well, you know, I'm going to, if you don't mind, I have um, a, a little story about like that, that's the kind of the precursor to how Ironman happened, right? Okay. We love stories. Go ahead. <laughs> well, because when I was thinking, you know, about this, I got intentional this morning and I'm like, you know, and, I've, and since we even booked this call, like, you know, how has nature affected me? What do I do in nature and all that? And, um, you know, when, when I was, so there was the time when I had that speed dating business and then, um, And then in the span of a year, I had this really, I had a really rough year. It was like, um, I broke up with a guy that I, you know, was seriously dating. I, I broke up with a, a friend. We had a little friend divorce, which happens from time to time. Um, the business, I had sold my uh, speed dating business and started another one and it was a complete flop. So financially, I was just destitute and I took on a, a job, you know, a regular corporate job because I just had to get some, bring some money in. And then one of my best friends died of cancer, like quickly. And all of that happened within a year. So it was like major life change, major undoing. That's lots of intensity, and, like, oh, heavy emotions, heavy yeah. losses. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, you know, I want, I want to, I want to go be in nature. I want to go do something that takes me out of, I was living in Los Angeles at the time, concrete jungle, you know, and I'm like, I want to go do something that's going to just be completely different from what I'm experiencing. And so I took this trip to um, Grand Canyon to Havasu Falls. Um, I don't know if you're all familiar with that area. It's yes. incredible. I mean, it's, look it up. It's an incredible area of the canyon. It's lush. You know, you always think the canyon is very arid and dry. And, and this has, the Havasu Falls is a waterfall. And, and the um, minerals in the water make, make that, um, make this, it's called, I think, travertine. And so it's like this clay looking kind of stuff around the walls of it that looks very prehistoric. And so I booked this trip and it's like me in a group of six. I don't know anyone. I go by myself. And, um, you know, the deal was 10 mile hike down into the Canyon, stay three nights, um, in tents and then hike back out. And I had never done anything like this. And so my thing was, okay, I'm going to take books. I'm going to lay by the waterfall every day. And I'm not going to do these like daily hikes thing that you guys want to do like I'm I'm not down for that I'm going to sit by the waterfall and so then like the first day they were like hey we're gonna go over here want to go hike and I was like all right well just this morning just this one and then I gotta go read my books like I'm trying to decompress over here I go do the hike I come back and I do the afternoon and then the next and the next Well, at the beginning of the trip, they told us about Mooney Falls, which is another fall down the thing. And to get to Mooney Falls, you literally have to crawl through the rock and the travertine and you come out and you're you're on this like wall, like a wall. And you have to scale down it. And there's, you know, rebar 
set into the rock. There's chains that you're holding. You're not attached. It's no, it's not like a rock climbing kind of thing, but you're just putting your foot in the rocks and like there's little wooden pieces of wood here and there to do it. And when they first described that, I was like, hell no. I'm like, I'm not going near. You guys have fun. I'll be over here reading the book. But by the time the day came that we did it, I was like, okay, I think I can do this. Like, okay, I'll, I'll go try. I'll at least go to the top of the thing and I'll try. And then I go, and of course, then I go through the thing. And then of course, you know, I go scaling down and I had this epiphany as I was on the side of that wall, holding onto the rebar. And it was like, all of a sudden I realized that I was the most present I had ever been in my life. And that I wasn't worried about my email and I wasn't worried about my business and I wasn't worried about my new job and I wasn't worried about my friend. And I wasn't worried about all that. I was totally here. And it felt so freeing in that moment to just be so present and, and just thinking about the rock, thinking about how I was going to, what thing I was going to move next, my foot or my hand. And that transformed my whole life because I, I say adventure girl was born because it woke up this <laughs> side of me that like, I didn't even know was in me. I didn't know I like to scurry around rocks. I didn't know that I was cool with heights and that I actually liked hiking. Who knew? And so, um, so after that, then I became way more adventurous and started running and uh, all the things that led to Iron Man and all of that. But Adventure Girl was born at Havasu Falls. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo I love awesome. that saying, Adventure Girl was born. Yeah. Oh my goodness, what a great story. So what compelled you to change, to say, okay, let me do this instead? Just take what? that. Uh-huh. Like what compelled you to say, oh, yes, I'm going to go on the hike, or yes, I'm going to just this? It was it was little bits. And I think... Um, you know, when I, when I tell my Kilimanjaro story, the, the, a big lesson from that is just one step at a time. And I think that's what happened. That thing was like, I got there and I was comfortable and it was beautiful. And it was like, oh, well, I could see more parts if I go on this hike and these people are nice. And, you know, okay, I'll, I'll just go for a hike for an hour. And, you know, and then I did that little bit and that was like, ah, oh, that was really fun. Like, okay, I'll go do another one for an hour. So it was like the little baby steps that got me in that, that I found out I enjoyed it. And I liked it more than I thought that I would. And, and it wasn't terrible and, you know, and I have fun. That's, that's an awesome story. Um, and it's so true. Um, that's why we actually started the adventures and stuff, because I've always used nature and art for um, experiences and to get out and for healing and stuff. And people don't realize it if they have never done it. Right. And so we're trying to create spaces for people to realize it's out there and how it actually transforms you. A lot of times people just don't realize it until, like you said, until you go and do it. I mean, that is probably the scariest thing is making that appointment or booking that trip or that adventure or retreat. But once you're there, you know, if you go with a positive attitude and it's funny is you weren't totally on with it you're going to bring your books or whatever. And it's like, yeah, if you ever come on our adventures, I doubt you're going to get a read too much. Okay. <laughs> or, or, it, cool. or if you choose to, it's fine too. Choose. It's fine too. Yeah. Well, but now I like all about the adventures. So <laughs> you, you can read anywhere, anytime, but when you're in one of our activities or experiences and events and adventures, we of course want you and to encourage you to join the fun of enjoying a new place and space. And I want you, Leanne, to help our audience understand that we, Tammy and I believe all the time, like self self-care is self-love it's not selfish and with that experience can you admonish can you tell our audience because we have a lot of uh caretakers we have a lot of people that give from their heart and want to take care of everyone and neglect themselves and I even have a friend that I wasn't raised loving out the outdoors I wasn't raised loving nature my parents didn't instill that in me but I want to do it more so what can you tell someone that's on the fence of yeah. giving themselves these opportunities what can you tell them yeah the well I think there's two things right um one is you know but part of my no regrets formula is commit to self first 
And it's that whole idea of what you're saying that like, you know, self-love isn't, or self-care isn't selfish. It's, um, it's actually more important than any care you give everyone else. Um, you know, I always like to use the analogy of the flight when you, when you fly, um, it's, they don't say, they, they say, put your mask on first before you help anyone else. And they, they're not saying put your, only your mask on and to hell with everybody else, right? They're saying just you breathe so that you can help others breathe. And so, you know, one frame that I always um, talk about is that we we want to make sure we, we can't give to others what we don't have. We can't give from the empty cup. And so filling your cup first actually allows you to serve more people. Yeah. And so it's not an act of service to say, I'm going to take care of you before I take care of me. And it's actually not helping the person as much. It might in the short term help them, but it doesn't in the long term help them. Um, and also, you know, if you don't put yourself first, nobody else will. I mean, that's the real paradox of it, right? Even with all oh. the giving you give to other people, nobody else is going to take care of you better than you take care of yourself. So. We can't give from empty pantries. We can't give from empty pockets and in, yeah. empty wallets. And we can't give from depleted and exhausted and burned out mental yes. mental bandwidth, right? Yes, so we need absolutely. to every time, every, every you know, just the same as we ch recharge our phones when, you know, which, oh, we think that's urgent and we can't go without putting that, you know, plugging that in every night. Yeah. Yeah. We don't realize that our brain, our emotions, our spirit needs that recharge time as well. And we yeah. are the ones that need to define, I mean, daily with our daily routines, meditation, yes. things like that. But seasonal, we were speaking, we were talking about seasons, seasonal. How often are we going to give that gift to ourselves? The, the gift of disconnecting to reconnect to what matters most, the divine nature and ourselves. Yeah. 100%. So that is very important. What's, what's interesting is how many people never think of themselves. They're like, oh, they're probably talking about somebody else that's really busy. But we're actually talking about the warriors out there, not and entrepreneurs, a lot of entrepreneurs, business owners, you know, um, but the moms and dads, even people don't realize how much they are giving. And if you're to me, you're a warrior if you're here today. You're, you're a survivor. You help others out all the time. You're kind, or you've gone through physical stuff. I mean, we all go through different things and that's what people forget. And we all need to recharge. We yeah. all need to come and go on the, these adventures. And I bet you met some cool friends on this adventure as well. <laughs> I meet, I meet people everywhere. I'm one of those people that I'm, um, you know, to your point also, Lori, with the, the disconnection, I think there's a, um, there's a big, you know, you don't have to go climb a mountain or do an Ironman to, <laughs> to reconnect with yourself and to give yourself a blessing of, of, um, uh, what the divinity is the word that's coming into my brain, but to, but to recharge that a big way we can do that is to not be on our devices all the time to put them on do not disturb to do that. And it's, it's interesting because I do that a lot. Like when I'm out in public, I normally don't have my phone out. I will go mm -hmm. eat at a restaurant by myself and not be in my phone. Wonderful. I'll be on the train. I'll be doing, you know, I see people now they're walking in there on their phone. So I make a concerted they're effort. Driving. Yeah. Which I've needed to hold yeah. my horn. Because yeah. But then it's like, okay, if you toot the horn, are they going to drive into somebody? <laughs> I'm like, right. I don't want to be that kind of driver, but I'm like, we need to, it's a hazard. It's a hazard. It's a hazard. <laughs> it's a hazard. And so I, I think that can be even that small step towards self-care, right? Is to, to, to cut that connection and to make sure you're present. And that's how I end up meeting a lot of people is because I'm actually, when I'm out in the world, I'm actually out in the world. I'm actually making eye contact. I'm actually chatting with people. I'm actually, instead of doing just a transaction at the grocery store, I'm looking them in the eye and, and having a conversation with them about whatever. And so um, that's, that's my secret tip to meeting people is that I'm just there. And it kind of goes back to the wall, right? I'm just very present. Um, and I think that's a big gift that we can give ourselves is the disconnection, the 
you know, at least one week a year, I don't get on my phone. I, I mean, I will use it for like um, necessary things, but I won't get on social. So That's I great take practice, it. like a detox, like a yeah. digital detox. Mm -hmm. Digital detox, right. And I will often have my phone on do not disturb um, so that I can focus because the, there's a myth that we can uh, multitask. And the truth is we actually can't multitask. We actually don't do any of the things that we're trying to do at the same time well. Right. And so I've really been um, focused on how do I focus and stay really present and be here with even just me. You know, sometimes we do that with others more, but I'm like, how can I even just be with me to even just tap in and say, what do I like? What do I want to eat? Do I really want to eat this? Do I really want to go there? Do I want, like, what do I really want to do? Like, just take that. Uh, so breath. now I take my phone everywhere, but I put it on do not disturb. Mm -hmm. And it's because I take photographs everywhere I go. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And, you know, and of course, if I'm in town, I'm not taking photographs and stuff, you know, then it's in my um, pocket or my purse or whatever. Because like you said, it's just more for emergency at that point, or I just wear the watch for emergencies. But um, I, since I'm an artist yeah. and I like to take photos everywhere or videos, you know, especially on our nature hikes, but that's, yeah. but like you said, you've just put the do not stir and I forget. So it's like, if somebody's trying to reach me, you just leave a message and wait 24 hours mm -hmm. and I'll be That'd with be you, fine. you know, but because every, we, want, we fine. have to get away. You have to get away yeah. from that phone call. So my phone's always usually on silent. Love or it. do not disturb so yeah speaking speaking of multitasking our dear uh lovely friend Erin uh no sorry Carrie Carrie Savari is always an Erin um Erin watches from work <laughs> so she, oh, she, hi, she's multitasking she's multitasking <laughs> okay but Fair we're enough. very <laughs> we're very grateful they're here and if you have a way uh Carrie and Erin that you disconnect that you show self-care please let us know share it in the comments Leanne is leading by example she's a great example of and and, and Tammy is going to look different for everybody you're an artist so oh, you want to yes. captivate you want to capture sorry capture those moments those beautiful pictures and mm -hmm. um I even force myself sometimes I'm going to capture this in my memory I'm going to appreciate yeah. this I'm going to be present however I understand how important it is to take pictures especially in places that you go more than mm -hmm. once go go often but at the same time it is going to look different for people some people decide to do the the social media fast is what some people call it too or digital mm -hmm. detox however it is the important part is that you're making it intentional and yes. you're being purposeful and yes. wanting to connect to whatever it is right i hear the yes. the joke that if you go out for dinner with friends and the first person that brings the cell phone out needs to pay, you know, kind of like yeah. the, the punishment yeah. is that or the consequence or, oh, but yeah. you, you need to know what are your boundaries, your own boundaries mm -hmm. and teach them for the people around you, loved ones, family and friends. But mm -hmm. this is great. I, we appreciate you sharing this because it is so important. I think society in general went into the amazingness and whatever it is the the phone it, it can be our rolodex if you even know what a rolodex is it's it's yeah. the yellow pages it's everything even the menus for yeah. restaurants nowadays yeah. but right. i think we have realized how the how attached we are to it or dependent we are on it and i think we're gonna find hopefully is my prayer anyways we're going to find people doing this same thing, setting boundaries, yeah. saying, no, 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 this is not time to do this anymore, or let's just put it off, shut it down for a little bit. Yeah. And, well, and I just love it. Go, go ahead. You know, so, and, Aaron, and Aaron, I am with you. I, a lot of times I will listen to something while I'm working. So that is a type of multi, but that's okay. Cause you're not do physically doing something you're listening and doing something at the same time so and we besides we love you and it's something positive right <laughs> I think that's the key thing right I mean sometimes I'll put on um music that's like a, a got a vibration of creativity or a vibration of abundance or sometimes I'll have that playing in the background and especially if I'm working on a particular project um and and that's you know that makes sense you know and that helps um I think that's I think there's two things. One is to just be super intentional about it. Cause I find in our lives, especially with so much media and so much, you know, access to everything we get on this path 
where we just kind of do things because that's the way we do things. Um, and we and what I want us to be and what I work with clients around also just being super intentional. You know, what am I listening to? Why am I listening to this? Why do I do this now? Why do I do that? And then also allowing for those moments um, to just let your mind wander. And I think that's a big part of creativity that can create art that can, you know, that can help us to connect with our true selves is to have those quiet moments where we're not on the phone, in the thing, listening, where we're just, we're just allowing our minds to kind of pick up a thread and go. And there's a lot that can come from that. And I feel like that's one thing we've lost in all the technology. We don't, we don't want, we don't want our minds wander anymore. Very, very true. I was talking with a client on this last week about stop watching so much news and media. Stop watching negative stuff constantly. Yeah. One thing, if you see it here or there, you know, glance at, but it's what I find is a lot of people you see there, it's like the next one, the next one. And it's, it's mm -hmm. all repeat. I mean, they repeat themselves. There's more like feed. What they find themselves doing is it's hour it's not just minutes it goes into hours and then they wonder why they're depressed well you know percent 100 I, I cut out the news years ago Same um here. I get a an email that uh sorry why I'm so happy I get an email that gives me headlines <laughs> yes gives me headline. and that's enough that's enough for you <laughs> it's enough it's enough because I'll tell you it, it finds it to you right when I go log in to check my yahoo email every day there's news flash. When I open up on um, Instagram or Facebook, there's, you know, people commenting. I have not missed one important, important thing ever. It right. finds its way to you. Right. Yeah, so it, it, it does. And it's amazing. I was complaining about the headlines to somebody the other day because the headlines are so misleading anymore. They're yes. such lies. So I don't even look at those anymore yeah. unless it's yeah. something like really, really sounds important. And then you look at, and you're like, this happened 10 years ago. Why is it even a headline? Right. And then you're frustrated right. with yourself for taking that time to yeah, even look at it. it. Yeah. I've yeah. also heard how much they distorted. People have been present in so many incidents and events. And there's a few people watching and of whatever accident, incident or whatever. And then what they how they see, they post it on the news. Totally different story from what they witnessed, which is 100%. crazy, crazy. Yeah. And Carrie, yeah. I'm happy. I'm glad you, it, Carrie saying, I used to be connected 24 seven, which that is kind of like, instead of a blessing is a course now, nowadays, because you, it, it can be like that 24 yeah. seven, there's always yeah. something going in any of the platforms. Right. So yeah. she said, it used, I used to be connected 24 seven. I'm now living with more purpose. I love it. I, love it. Love I it. haven't watched TV since January of 2020. Yay. I love it. Love it. Love, love it. it. So Leanne, where did you do your Ironman at? And how many hours a day were you training for it? Whew. Uh, well, I did Ironman Wisconsin. And just for anyone who doesn't know, isn't familiar with what an Ironman is, um, it's a long form triathlon. So it's um, a 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike, and then a full marathon, 26.2 mile run all in the same day. Um, you have 17 hours to complete it. Amazing. Um, it took me 16 hours and 51 minutes. I did it in Wisconsin. Um, so up in Madison. Wisconsin, so um, That's amazing. I have, tattoo to prove it. Anyway. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I have a, actually a student I used to mentor actually trains, um, people for the Ironman and oh. I have an Ironman here in Coeur d'Alene every year. Oh, Coeur d'Alene. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's a really popular one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We have, so that weekend, it's like, we don't even go to Coeur d'Alene because you know, all the roads, everything. Yeah. Up and there's so many people yeah. in town for yeah. it. So. Yeah. Well, it's a, it is a fun, I will say my friends um came to cheer me. So, so the deal is I, I, I have two attempts and one finish. So the first time I attempted, I finished the whole swim. I finished the whole bike, but I missed the bike cutoff. So they wouldn't let me run. Um, they're very strict about, you have to do each leg in a certain amount of time. Um, and so I took a year off and then I came back and, um, and so I had a bunch of friends who came up to cheer me the second time. And, um, it was hilarious because they like, didn't have a concept for how long the day was going to be, you know, and they were like, can we go out for pizza? You know, when you're done. And I'm like, dude, I'm not going to be done till like midnight. Like I went, <laughs> <laughs> but you persevered. And were, right. And then they were following all around in the hills of Verona, beautiful 
um, hills outside of Madison. Um, but it was, yeah, it's, it's, it is inspiring to, I mean, they still talk about the day that they had running all around trying to find me and, but then also just watching so many people just, you know, pushing their limits and doing something they'd never done before. And, um, I still get emotional thinking about the actual finish because, um, there was a time when I said, that's impossible. Like who would even try that? That's stupid. Those distances are ridiculous. And so to go from it's stupid to actually doing it was like, whoa. And, and where else am I telling myself something is impossible or something is, and it's like, cause I haven't even taken the first little step to it. So. Yeah. Um, even, even the um, word impossible uh, has, I'm possible. Right? I'm possible. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's right so, there. And then how was your, uh, tell us a little bit about your hike up the mount. Was it, um, the Kilimanjaro? Yeah, that's what it was. Um, it was so Kilimanjaro. Oh, that was like, I can't easily show you. I literally just got a tattoo for that this weekend. So, <laughs> but it's oh, on my you? foot and I'm not flexible enough to get my foot up here. But I, <laughs> um, it's uh, so Kilimanjaro is the third highest um, mount summit out of there's like seven summits. It's the highest mountain in Africa and the high and the highest standalone mountain in the world. It's nineteen thousand, I think, three hundred forty eight, nineteen three. Oh wow, that's uh, oh so goodness. It, yeah, so it was a five day. We did the five day version, which is three and a half days up, one and a half days down, which is short. Most people would take six to eight days, apparently. I don't know. <laughs> um, and it's really cool. I mean, talk about nature you go through four different vegetation zones. So you start in like the jungle and the, you know, rainforest and green and lush and everything. And then you move into the, um, the moorland, which is like ferny and mossy and like a little lower to the ground and, and a little, um, different like shrubs instead of trees. And then you go into the, um, Alpine desert, which is like the moon, like, no vegetation, rocks, um, you know, maybe a crow, but no animals, no, just barren. And then you hit the Arctic zone, which is what it sounds like, you know, rain, uh, snow, um, sleet, um, uh, you know, ice, very cold. And that's that last part that you go up um, to the mountain. So it's uh, the, the, the shortest story is we, we left camp. So we, we had hiked during the day on the third day, six hours, we get to camp. Then they're like, rest a little bit. And then we left at like 11, 15 PM because they, they're trying to get you up for sunrise. And so we left camp at 11, 15 AM or PM. We summited at 9, 15 AM. So it took that long to like, cause you know, you're in altitude, you're over 15,000 feet. You're instead of strolling, you're like going step, step step and it's cold and you can't see. And there's just all of this. It just, it, it's like everything and every piece of your body is trying to just take that step and breathe. And so getting up there was just so horrendously long. It was harder than Ironman day. I was no, this <laughs> so that. intense yeah. because you're walking in the dark. In the dark. Yeah. Literally the, and since it was snowing, you know, I couldn't discern that when I'd look up, I couldn't discern the mountain from the sky. <gasps> all I could see was the headlamp of all the other hikers trying to make it to the summit. And that line seemed like it was going on forever. You're like on switchbacks and it just, and you could only see like a foot in front of you because they're, you know, they're, it's not like there's a light on the side of Kilimanjaro to like light the path, <laughs> like <laughs> just whatever you have on your head. So Gosh. It was, it was intense. It was intense. Yeah, Congre um, congratulations very, very on very doing that. And, you know, and I'm just thinking of just some of the places that I've hiked to during the daytime or when, um, that we even took the grandkids to and we we're like going, okay, we would not want to be hiking up here in the winter because the way the rocks are, they'd be so slippery. You have to have the right equipment because yeah. you could easily, and if you didn't, know where you were going you could easily go off a cliff you know or yeah. into a crevice and yeah so I can't imagine and that's only was like seven thousand feet where we were at or eight but it wasn't 15 or thousand I mean so oh wow that was that must have been intense but how was the summit what did it stop snowing so you could see views or anything 
Yeah. I mean, once the sun came out, life got a lot more enjoyable because, <laughs> you know, because your perspective, because it, it, it's an interesting mind game, right? If it, for the longest time, it was pitch black with, you know, little headlamps snaking up on the switchback. And that was just like, my brain kind of didn't know what to do with that. Once the sun came out and, uh, and it came out when I was shortly to the, to the kind of like part where you get to the rim and then you just have to walk around the rim of the volcano. When they got to there, it's like, oh, I can, I can see, I can see how far I need to go. I see how far I've come. I can, you know, and then, and the sky kind of, we kind of stopped snowing. I mean, by the time we got to summit, it was like perfect, beautiful blue sky. Now we're like kind of hot because the sun's out and, you know, we're up there and we the perfect picture and, and, you know, you can see glaciers up there. And I mean, it was, it was stunning. It was like, you well, we're share photos. Yes. That's what I was going to say. I want to see pictures inside the group. Yeah. Yeah. You can I share. Will that totally. would be great. That, that's, yes. that's amazing. So now tell me, why do they have you hike at night up that summit? I mean, that's. Yeah. It's like ridiculous. The Did way, they give you warnings of potential dangers or is there not, is it that safe or. I mean, it, it, it's relatively safe in the sense that there's no cliffs. Like there's not like a sheer cliff that you're, you're going to like tumble down. Right. It's a, Good. it's a gradual thing and you're on switchbacks. Um, the ground is very, um, it's like volcanic rock. So it's like, you know, a mix of snow and the rocks. Um, and it's a pretty well carved path. Um, so I never felt like, Oh my God, I'm going to fall off. Um, you know, you don't need any special equipment. And it just was like, it just took forever. So part of the reason is because um, the altitude, you know, you're so high that they don't want you to try to go too fast. So they want to give you time to get up there. Part of it is they're trying to get you up to the, at least the top part of the rim. So they just need to walk around at sunrise. So that way, you know, you can then see what's happening. You can see the gorgeous sunrise from the roof of Africa, like, you know, which is amazing. Part of the reason is, and you don't really put together how tough this part is, is that when you come back down off the summit, you can't stay at that camp that you were just at. You actually have to walk to the next camp. And and my friend and I literally were just talking about this this weekend. We think that's because you're just so high. You know, that camp is at 15,000, a little over 15,000 feet. And so you're just so high. You don't want to stay in that altitude for too long because you go up to 19, then you come back down. And so, you know, we left at 11.15 p.m. We summited at 9.15 a.m., we didn't hit the camp we could sleep at until like 7 30 PM. So that's a long day. So that's if they, you know, if they didn't start until like sunrise or whatever on that summit day, I, it would, it would take too long. And then you'd be in the dark in the middle of nowhere. And I think that would actually be more dangerous than trying to hike up the side of the mountain. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sometimes going down can be trickier than going up. Yeah. I mean, what people don't realize. And it can be more tension on your knees and everything. Yes. Everything. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good. All of that. So did you have to have <laughs> oxygen tanks and stuff with you or a little anything? The, the guides had them in case we needed them. Um, but we you don't technically need it. It's not Everest. You don't need it to do the actual climb. Um, the guides, I will say, were absolutely incredible. They were so um, present with us. They were every night, they would check our pulse ox. They would, um, go through this list of symptoms. Are you experiencing this out or the other? Because the, at the first sign of altitude sickness, they will get you off the mountain as quickly as possible. So they were very, you know, where are you at? What's going on? How are you feeling? Um, and, and checking on us. And How did you train? How did you train for it? And we say it's hard in Chicago. We don't have hills there. Exactly. <laughs> like a staircase. Know, you guys are way lower. I mean, I understand yeah. like in certain parts of Colorado, like I've been to Breckenridge where the elevation is what, like at least 10,000, 9,000. Yeah. 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 I think it's 9,000 at the, so, at the, at, yeah. And, but, and you can feel the difference even in that. You can feel the difference in Denver. I can, since I live at sea level. Um, the, so one thing we did was we did go to, we hiked Quandry, uh, which is a 14, a, a little over 14,000 feet. And that's just outside of Breckenridge. So I did that, um, in the, to, to just test going up and down in a day and, and test the altitude. We also took this, um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's altitude medication that helps you to breathe better when you're, um, at altitude. And so I tested it on Quandry because I'm like, you know, didn't want to test it on Killy and have like a weird <laughs> reaction. So, um, so we tested that. And then otherwise I just, 
man, I loaded up my pack. I weighted it down to, you know, do that. And I went around in my boots everywhere. I did every hill I could do in Chicago and I did the stair mill and, you know, and, and you feel you were ready? You, you feel I was you ready. Were ready. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, Good congratulations man. on that. Those are those two feats though. I mean, you know, Ironman and then climbing that those are great experiences for being in nature and an adventure or even starting with your first one to the Grand Canyon. Yeah. And it just shows your accomplishments, accomplishments, and it shows your attitude, how you're willing to try to give it a try and to you go for it. So congratulations on that. That's Thank you. so amazing. Yeah. Thank giving you. yourself those opportunities for growth to push yourself um, and to feel that accomplishment is so wonderful. Leading by example, I feel Thank like you. you have this notion and understanding of what it is to take time for yourself, take time for for growth, et cetera. And definitely the time goes by so fast when we're having fun. <laughs> yes. And we want to honor your time and our viewers' time. We love everybody here. Suzanne Jimenez, we're glad you joined mm -hmm. us. Doesn't matter, mm -hmm. better late than never. And yeah. those watching the video, either here on the Facebook group or YouTube, um, tell us about your experiences. How have you pushed yourself? Or we invite you, we usually, we used to have challenges, right, Tammy? What is yeah. your what is your new uh I, I don't know challenge we it's only Tuesday it's the beginning of the week every oh, every let's challenge people to go on a hike right Leah go on yeah a hike. Go on a, hey and challenge people to pictures. turn the phone off yes Leave the phone behind or just turn it off put it on do not disturb for well I want a picture of their hike but 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 make sure to put it on do not disturb so, yeah or, yes. or take a picture of the beginning of your hike and then put it away you Wonderful. know you can yeah you can use it a camera. You can also, I'm going to blow your mind. You can get a separate camera. Oh yeah. There you go. That doesn't that's have to I, be That's your what phone. I took to Africa. So I took to Africa and I spent three weeks off my phone oh, um, wow. because that, I wasn't texting yes. anyone. I wasn't doing anything. And I, and I have, could do videos and movies on my, um, I had the adventure camera. I can't remember what brand it is, but like it can get wet. You can drop it. It's shocking. I like, I have a GoPro that I, we take out on different, um places yeah. that so, is yeah. discipline right. leanne that is discipline i i what what an honor for you to be here to get to know you and for you to tell us your stories and mm -hmm. to close do you have any words i mean you have inspired us definitely but what would be your last um i don't know advice and motivation statements for our audience to get themselves out there and do great things just try it right? There's the Nike, just do it. I'm like, just try it. If you don't like it, you don't have to do it again, but just try it at least one time. Yeah. Because then they'll figure out what have they been missing or what is it that they don't want to miss out on anymore. Right. Yeah. yeah. You might just might find something that you love. I didn't start running until I was 40, you know, <laughs> like, so you can get, you can do it. I'm 55 now. I was 54 when I summited Kilimanjaro, like, you know, it keeps you young. Just try different things. So just try it. It, it does. I, I don't like it when people sit there. Well, I'm too old when they hit 40 and I'm like going, I'm 60 and I still go out and go on hikes with my grandkids. Yes. I'll go tubing. Yes. I, it's experiences. You're yes. only as old as you think you are. Mm -hmm, you know, exactly. Go and enjoy life. We only have one life to live and you've yep. got to live it. Otherwise, if you just say, oh, talk about it all the time, you're never going to do it. You talk mm, about yeah. how you're going to go on a retreat or do this or that, yes. but if you never do it, yeah. you're never going to accomplish it. So that's why I'm like, and so when, uh, and I am so thankful and I feel blessed that we had Leanne here today, um, a wonderful guest. And if you guys have any questions, be sure to put them in like Lori's mm -hmm. mentioned, um, Leanne can, we'll put that on there. We'll put your, there was a one link in the website and um, Leanne can link her website as well again. Um, cool. For those who would like to have more information about her, um, make sure you follow us um, on, on our website because we're always adding new things and unlocking. Um, make sure you follow us even on our YouTube channel because you just never know with Facebook and everything yeah. else that goes on if they will shut, shut down something to where we can't do a live here or something. So make sure you follow us on different um, places, your favorite, and make sure you share because yeah. when you share, like Lori says, you care. Um, it's <laughs> because 
So you might not think, you might think, oh, this isn't for me, but you might have a friend out there or family yeah. that you're like, oh, they could really use that person's coaching or they could really use that adventure or retreat or, oh my gosh, they're always posting positive things that help inspire us daily. Um, so we want you to make sure you're always checking out everything that we do have to offer. Nice. I love it. Well, we'll see you guys next week with another amazing guest. But for right now, we're just in the present, enjoying and, and having been so honored and happy to and pleased to have Leanne here with us. Thanks for your stories. Thanks for your teachings and your example. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Have a great day.